The Port Arthur Convict Settlement began life as a small timber station in 1830. Originally designed as a replacement for a local timber camp, Port Arthur quickly grew in importance within the penal system of the colonies. After the American War for Independence, Britain could no longer send her convicts to America, so after 1788 they were transported to the Australian colonies. From 1833 until 1877, Port Arthur was the destination for many convicted British criminals. The convicts sent to Port Arthur were most likely to be poor young people from rural areas or from the slums of big cities. One in five people sent to Port Arthur were women, many of whom brought children along with them. Forced to do hard labor, the prisoners of Port Arthur did many tasks in a multitude of fields including shipbuilding, shoemaking, smithing, timber, and brickmaking. The peninsula on which the settlement is located is a naturally secure site. Being surrounded by water, the prison was said to be inescapable, much like the later Alcatraz Island in the US. The 1840s witnessed a consolidation of the industrial and penal nature of the settlement, as the convict population reached well over 1100. In 1848, the first stone was laid for the separate prison, the completion of which brought a shift in punishment philosophy from physical to mental subjugation. For instance, the harsh punishment of whippings, used in other penal stations, was thought to only serve to harden criminals, and did nothing to turn them from their immoral ways. Instead, food was used as a reward and punishment. A prisoner could receive large amounts of food, or even luxury items such as tea, sugar, and tobacco, and as a punishment, the prisoners would receive the bare minimum of bread and water. Under this system of punishment, the silent system was implemented in the prison. Here, prisoners were hooded and made to stay silent. This was supposed to allow time for the prisoners to reflect upon the actions which brought them there. Many of the prisoners in the separate prison developed mental illness from the lack of light and sound. This was an unintended outcome. Eventually an asylum was built right next to the separate prison to house the growing population of the mentally ill. In many ways, Port Arthur was the model for many penal reforms throughout the country, despite the shipping, housing, and slave labor use of convicts being as harsh or worse than other penal settlements around the nation. Port Arthur continued expanding geographically as the convicts pushed further in the encircling hills to extract the valuable timber of the land. Of all the laborious occupations some convicts were forced to carry out during their time at Port Arthur, timber collection was said to be the most punishing, yet also the most profitable. From the very early days of the settlement, gangs of convicts cut timber from the bush surrounding the settlement, supplying a steady stream of building materials to fulfill the needs of work both on and off the peninsula. The 1853 secession of transportation resulted in fewer transportees arriving in the station. However, since Port Arthur was one of the few secondary punishment stations operating in the colonies, it still received a large proportion of colonial men and women, as well as the old transportees still within the system. The 1850s and 1860s were years of remarkable activity that aimed to make the station economically sustainable. Expansive tracts of bush were harvested to feed a growing timber industry, and large plots of land were turned over to cultivation. This pulse of energy, however, could not be sustained. The 1860s shuffled into the 1870s, and the settlement began to enter its twilight. The numbers of convicts dwindled, those remaining behind were too aged, infirm, or insane to be of any use, and the settlement that had hummed with life slowly ground to a standstill. The last convict was shipped out in 1877. Despite its reputation as a pioneering institution for the new view of imprisonment, Port Arthur was still in reality as harsh and as brutal as other penal settlements. Some critics might even suggest that its use of psychological punishment, compounded with no hope of escape, made it one of the worst prisons in the British colonies. Some tales suggest that prisoners committed murder, an offense punishable by death, just to escape the desolation of life at the camp. The Isle of the Dead was the destination for all who died inside the prison camp. Of the 1,646 graves recorded to exist there, only 180 graves, those of prison staff and military personnel are marked. During the settlement's time, it saw many prisoners attempt to escape, one of those being the notorious Martin Cash. Martin Cash was an Irish-Australian bushranger. He was sentenced to seven years of penal transportation for shooting a man making advances to a woman that he liked. On Boxing Day 1842, Martin Cash, alongside George Jones and Lawrence Cavanaugh, escaped from a work party. Hiding in dense scrubland and with little food, they made their way to the neck of the peninsula, swimming with their clothes tied in bundles above their heads. They made it to the other side and began an eight-month spree of bushranging, robbing mail coaches, homesteads, and inns. However, in August of 1843, Cash discovered his partner Bessie was with another man in Hobart. Enraged, Cash swore to kill them both, and he made his way to Hobart. On the 29th of August, 1843, he was spotted by police in Hobart near the old Commodore Inn. Cash turned into Melville Street, hoping to escape the pursuing police. Unaware that it was a dead end, a gunfight ensued, and Constable Peter Winston Lee was shot by Cash, and died two days later. Cash was trialed for murder in September 1843, and found guilty, and sentenced to death by hanging. 
but a last minute reprieve saw him sentenced to transportation for life at Norfolk Island. Cash, who eventually earned his freedom and died in his bed on his farm in 1877, is one of the few bush rangers to die of old age. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and comment down below any ideas for future videos. See you next time.